Oops. Hello one and all, a uh, very warm good evening to all of you. Uh, so today's uh, session as all of you know is going to be on energy emissions, uh, carbon footprint, energy use at home. So there is a presentation that is there and uh, I would want everyone uh, to download it from the given site so that it becomes easier for you. Uh, we are going to start off now in, uh, while I add Abhishek. Hey. Hi. hey Sanju, how's it going? How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. How are okay. you? So, uh, we just uh, started a minute earlier. I have uh, okay. put your presentation online and I have put the link here also so that people can right. download it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean also there is no, there's no need basically. What I, what I could do is uh, I'll also be showing you guys uh, the presentation on my screen out here, right? Okay. So yeah, that'll be easier for everyone to follow. I mean, if somebody wants to download, yeah. it's even better. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it'll, it'll, I'll, I'll be showing the presentation over here right now. So yeah. Yeah. So we put the link already, so uh, so that they can use in the future also for for the same. Yeah. And yeah, sure. uh, that sounds good. Yeah. So uh, towards the crowd, uh, once again, a very warm good evening to one and all. Uh, it has been really amazing for the past five, six days. We have been having several sessions and a lot of people have been uh, viewing it and getting a lot of learnings. So uh, Abhishek is an energy expert. In fact, we had did a college together back in Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. We did, uh, I mean, together we, uh, were, I mean, even we, we were roommates too. So he's an amazing energy expert and he can give you a clear idea on what your energy emissions look like and uh, how it can be tackled. Uh, Abhishek, we'll do one thing. We'll wait till like 7, 2 or 7, 3 to start off the session. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, sure. you can uh, brief about yourself as well, what you're doing now maybe and things like that so that uh, by the time others join, we can start off. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I work as an energy consultant out here in Delhi. And uh, most of my work relates to uh, renewable energy consulting. So I work on uh, uh, solar energy, wind energy, uh, things like that. How to basically make our energy system more sustainable. So yeah, today's talk basically, uh, we have an interesting thing lined up for everybody out here. Uh, yeah. we'll, be, uh, we'll be showing them uh, uh, how to first to understand what do we mean by emissions, then uh, to help you understand uh, how, wh wh what do we mean when we say emissions from your home energy use, how to uh, reduce those emissions, uh, how you can benefit from them, and uh, how to rate yourself based on uh, what degree of uh, 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 you know, uh, your awareness about uh, energy sustainability. So yeah, we'll we will we'll have a we have a nice presentation lined up for everyone. Uh, hopefully, nice. all the graphics and illustrations uh, will help you guys understand better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Also, want to thank so, you for uh, planning this amazing thing. Yeah. Yeah. Energy emissions uh, uh, globally is almost 25 to 30 percent of all emissions come from energy needs and heating needs. So uh, it is quite a big chunk of the emissions that is caused. And thankfully, uh, due to the latest technology and a lot of movement into renewables, we have been moving into sustainable sources of energy. 
but in a country like india we still have millions of people who has in a proper energy source till now so we still have to provide energy for a lot of people at the same time there is a lot of losses in terms of trans trans trans, trans um, distribution losses also are quite high so uh, this is a time when each one of us need to know what is the energy emissions look like and how it is caused and how each one of us are contributing to energy emissions and what are the minimal things that each one of us can do to uh, reduce our emissions even if it's just 5% of our em- energy emissions this knowledge is quite important so we have around 20 people uh, uh, watching this now so let's start off uh, abhishek uh, yes tell us about uh, tell us more about energy emissions and uh, uh, how how we can get to know about our energy emissions over to you abhishek sure yeah thanks thanks anju so to start with as you mentioned uh, the issue with climate change right almost a third of our emissions come from energy use and uh, uh, other such uh, practices right so now yeah of course uh, uh, home energy use is part of the problem uh, and each one of us can do something to reduce uh, those emissions do our bit right uh, of course it is not uh, it is not a solution which will solve the entire climate change problem but all of us can do our bit uh, and contribute to the global effort to uh, reduce to restrict climate change uh, so today's presentation um, we will take you through uh, what do we mean by emissions and uh, how to how you can contribute to reduce your emissions from home energy use right okay. so let us start with uh, the basic concept uh, this is uh, so everything that we do from say uh, cooking at home right you use your gas stove that uh, when you use the gas even you burn gas you are emitting uh, co2 and other other gases uh, when you uh, when you burn coal to generate electricity uh, mm-hmm. you are uh, you are causing emissions uh, when you use any transport when you go from one place to another again you are uh, causing emissions okay so now uh today we'll just focus specifically on uh, uh what do we uh, mean by emissions from electricity use at home right so i'll i'll just show you a few slides quickly and uh, that's going to help you so uh, let's let us have a look at a basic look at uh, what do we mean by uh elect- emissions from electricity use at home all right so now most of us get our electricity from an electricity board right this could be your state uh, state board which supplies uh, electricity to you it could be and and uh, it could be uh, a private companies for example in delhi where i stay uh, reliance is one of the distribution companies which provides electricity to my house uh, if it's mumbai i think tata is one of the utilities in mumbai right so uh, they provide electricity to our homes now uh, what they do is they basically purchase electricity from uh, coal power plants from wind energy resources and solar energy resources they they basically mm-hmm. purchase electricity from these sources and then they provide it to our homes right now uh, from this this slide basically tells us that you are as green or as sustainable in terms of electricity use as your utility so what mm-hmm. i'm saying is if your utility purchases all of its energy from solar and wind resources right you essentially your emissions from uh, use of electricity at home is essentially zero however mm-hmm. uh, most of the utilities in india they purchase their energy from coal power plants which okay. do cause emissions right yeah. so uh, now the a good question to ask after this is uh what is the emissions uh what, 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 how much emission you're causing from the use of uh, energy at home so let's yeah. let's, let's look at how to calculate now okay. most of so us would have yeah this, this is a important slide yeah so most of us would have uh, received or seen this bill in our life at least once i mean th- this is the same bill which you get from uh, one of uh, 
there's this guy who comes to your home once a month, reads the meter of your electricity and gives you this bill. And most of the bills yeah. are color coded in the same way, right? So uh, usually it's easy to find how much consumption uh, you have for a specific month, all right? So for example, let's see, uh, usually uh, it, it could say that, okay, you have consumed 100 units this month. What units basically uh, means is basically it is as good as saying, okay, I've eaten uh, 5 kg of cheese this month and I'm paying say, 20 rupees per kg of cheese, right? Similarly, it basically talks about how many units and unit of electricity is kilowatt hour, right? So it's, it's an example to help everyone understand what do we mean uh, by units consumed. Usually okay. an average household, right, would consume uh, on an average 300 to 400 units per month. Okay. All right. Now that means on an annual basis, they'll consume around 3,500 units. Okay. Uh, and uh, now, as I said, this energy comes from coal power plants or other power plants where they have emissions, right? So usually what uh, happens Abhishek, is... Uh, just Abhishek, just a sec. I wanted to tell the audience that the presentation that he's showing is down there on the link even pinned here. So you can download it from there if you want to see it directly. Yeah, thank you. Abhishek, you can carry on. Yeah, sure. Uh, also, I'll also be showing you guys from the slides out here. So if you guys just want to you know, just look at this, that's also fine. Uh, so coming back to, uh, so say, for example, you are using 3,500 units a month, right? And each unit causes almost one kg of CO2 emissions. Okay. So if you use 3,500 3, units, you're essentially emitting 3,500 kg of CO2 uh, for the entire year oh, right? yeah. from your use of electricity, right? To, to, to put it in, 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 yeah, to give a better context to it, uh, you usually emit 150 grams of CO2 per kilometer, right? That means your annual energy use, electricity use, is equal to traveling 2,300 kilometers uh, in a year, in a car. Right. Which basically means going around the world four times a, in a year. That's a lot yeah. of emissions, right? Uh, yeah. From just one household. Yeah. And we have millions of consumers, millions of households. So now, what do you do? I mean, there's of course something that you can do out here, right? You can reduce... You can use more sustainable sources of energy, uh, and let's see, let's see how you can tackle this issue. Mm -hmm. So there are a few options that we can look at out here. Options to reduce emissions from your home energy use. All right. Option one is the easiest one: uh, use more efficient appliances, which have better star rating. Star rating is basically it says. Uh, the more star rating you have, your appliance has, uh, uh, higher efficiency it has. It will save you more energy, it will save you more cost, and hence, of course, it will save you more emissions. So just uh, shifting from uh, blue yellow bulbs to uh, LEDs would, uh, would help you save on energy cost and emissions uh, at your home. The second option is you can, use, you can install a rooftop solar power plant. That will basically okay. essentially uh, bring your emissions to zero because all mm -hmm. of your energy is available, right? Third option is you can, so this is about electricity, right? You can also reduce uh, other kinds of energy source. Say, for example, I remember when I was growing up uh, back in Gujarat, right, Rajkot, I remember uh, sometimes we would heat water on our stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So now one way is, I mean, if you have a heater, well and good. If you don't have a heater, if you're using stuff, you can replace that with a solar heater. That will again save you uh, emissions and energy and cost. And uh, mm -hmm. lastly, something that has been growing and is, is, is going to grow exponentially in the next few years is using electric vehicles. Uh, mm -hmm. So combining all these uh, options, uh, better appliances, using solar energy at home uh, for electricity and heating, as well as using electric vehicles, all these four things together 
can help you substantially reduce your emissions. Now, let's look at, now the next question is, I think many of you would be interested in, in understanding, okay, but how much does it cost, right? I mean, I wanna do this, I wanna, I wanna you know, do my bit, but how much does it cost, right? So we have, we are, we have, we have done a basic calculation which you can have a look and understand. Uh, yeah, hold the camera a bit uh, parallel. Uh, I mean, a bit. Not, not sure, yeah. maybe close, a bit more down, yeah. Now it's better, yeah. It's better? Yeah. All right. I hope you guys can read what is this, right? Uh, so let's say, let's, for example, say you are living in, see Sanju lives in Kerala. Uh, let's say you're living in Kerala, right? And you want to see how much it will cost you to install uh, one kilowatt of power plant, uh, solar power plant, right? And to understand how much uh, energy you can save and uh, how much uh, CO2 emissions you can save if you install one kilowatt of solar power plant on your roof, right? So right out of the bat, it'll, it's gonna cost you 60,000 rupees to install. However, the government uh, provides you a 30% subsidy on that. So it brings down your cost to 42,000 rupees uh, for a one kilowatt system, which will generate almost 1,500 units, right? Uh, that's, that's basically, you're saving almost 500 rupees a month okay. just by installing this uh, one kilowatt power plant system. So, uh, mm -hmm. and over a 25 year period, this system is going to save you one and a half lakh rupees. That's a good amount of savings, right? And uh, it'll save you 31,000 uh, kgs of CO2 over its lifetime. Now, what does that mean? That's as good as you planting 49 trees over a lifetime, mm -hmm. right? So what oh, that means that you plant... Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I just saw it as 1,000, that's right. 31,000 yeah. kilograms. Okay. 31,000, so basically, uh, what I mean by that is, uh, so all of us want to do something, right, uh, to reduce our uh, carbon footprint. Now, yeah. this was one of the options that we just showed, right? You can uh, install a solar power plant on your roof. All of its energy comes from uh, sun, so it's renewable, it's zero emissions, and uh, you are contributing to the environment. Now, you can easily install these power plants by just applying to uh, a local vendor, uh, most of like the market is well developed, so you can easily contact your local vendor who installs rooftops. And uh, these days, you can install a one kilowatt system for as low as 500 rupees a month EMI, for, like oh, a 10 year wow. loan. Yeah, so, uh, so that's something that you can definitely explore. I mean. The, the, the most, uh, the highest impact you can have is by installing uh, a solar power plant on your roof. Uh, if you can, you know, manage to install it. I mean, it can directly reduce consumption from your utility. So you're saving your cost there itself, right? Yeah. You don't have to pay yeah. for that much energy to your utility. Plus you are saving on emissions. So these things uh, matter. We almost uh, recover the cost invested within a uh, five year period, right? According to the That's numbers correct. that you have. Right about five to six years, that would be a correct estimation, yes. We have a question here, what is the lifespan of solar uh, that we use on a rooftop setup? How often will it have to be changed? Uh, yeah, so uh, solar power plant, uh, most of the panels that you buy, uh, they all come with a warranty of uh, 25 years. So you have, mm -hmm. you have uh, almost, uh, almost a surety that that power plant will keep producing electricity for 25 years, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think there was, right? Uh, based on that, uh, if some tree grows over it or there is dust or so, the efficiency yeah, so you, have to, you have to keep cleaning it. And uh, uh, like there are guidance which there's guidance which you can follow to clean it. And uh, it's it's very easy. I mean, it's it's like I I know a lot of people who have like I have a, I have a cousin of mine. Who owns a chemical factory? Who runs a chemical factory in uh, in Gujarat, right? And okay. before a few years, he installed, I think, around uh, a hundred kilowatt power plant, okay. uh, solar power plant. He has a huge roof, and he installed it, and uh, it significantly has reduced his 
uh, cost uh, for energy, and uh, they get other benefits on tax and you know, other other such benefits. So uh, we will definitely come back to other questions. Let me just uh, go ahead and provide more options yes, that yeah. you can. So uh, this is so this one option was okay. Install a solar power plant, and all of your energy comes from the sun. It's emission free, uh -huh. and you're good, right? Uh, let's look at other options. Let's look at say we don't want to install a solar power plant, but you can do small things. You can start with small things like like replacing your uh, yellow bulbs with uh, LED bulbs, right? That itself yeah. can cost you. Uh, around 320, sorry, that itself will help you save 320 rupees uh, uh -huh. by replacing a yellow bulb with LED bulb. Uh, they consume less energy, almost 10% uh, of it, right? And uh, so basically, it saves, basically, the cost of LED is recovered almost within a uh, year's time. Uh, a bit closer to, to that part. Yeah. Yeah. So. So usually, uh, so a, a yellow bulb will use 60 watts of energy, right, to give you the same amount of light. And an LED, which is five star rated, will uh, do the same job in six to seven watts. Okay. So right off the bat, you're saving on energy right there, right? Yeah. So to, to, according to an estimate, you can save 320 rupees for the entire year on your uh, bills. So, mm -hmm. and usually an LED, LED would, would, wouldn't cost you more than that. So you're recovering your cost okay. immediately. And similarly, this is, this is about the LED, right? Uh, uh -huh. If you do the same thing with your air conditioner, right? If you use a five-star air conditioner instead of a one-star air conditioner, right off the bat, uh, you will, your energy savings can increase by 20 percentage. Okay. While your cost savings... Uh, Will uh, increase almost by hundred percentage because oh, of the graded wow. because of the graded way uh, you have to pay your bills. The more energy you consume, the higher bill you pay. Usually, that's how it works. Uh, if you see okay. your bill, you can so basically uh, so when you save energy twenty percent of energy by moving to better efficient appliances, you're saving on energy as well as emissions and costs, right? So now. Uh, this is this is all the, this is the basics of everything right now let's look at where do if you want to know where you do do you stand how would you rate yourself on a matrix uh, uh -huh. of uh, energy sustainability so we uh, we made a very interesting chart hope this helps you guy help helps you guys uh, get a better idea on uh, what uh, how to rate yourself right so now on the on the x axis out here, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's basically the degree of energy sustainability. Basically, how many more appliances you are using at your home which are sustainable in terms of energy consumption, right? And on the y-axis, you can see uh, your savings. The more appliances you use, the more you save in terms of energy emissions and costs, right? Mm -hmm. So now uh, you can rate yourself. Say if you are uh, if you are using uh, better uh, rated appliances, right, give, give yourself a good rating. That, that, that's good enough, right? However, just be careful out here because as we discussed in the first few uh, uh, minutes, most of a third of our population still does not have sufficient uh, access to electricity. So most yeah. of them, uh, most of us, right, most of us, we don't have... Uh, uh, our energy needs right now are almost medium to low, right? Mm -hmm. So, and and the affordability of our appliances is, is also low for most of us, right? I mean, most of the people who live in a village, uh, they can't afford uh, buying a solar heater. They have to make do with, do with wood and other such measures, right? But they yeah. might still be able to adopt uh, better appliances. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, the class... The consumer class in which you belong also decides how much uh, energy you can save and how much uh, you know and how much you can afford in terms of buying appliances. So for example, if you are if you belong to the urban middle class, of course you can uh, have better appliances, but you can also uh, you can also use solar heaters. You can afford to install heaters on your roof, right? And yeah. uh, uh, basically, you can save more. 
uh, energy and emissions as well. Other and and yeah. further going further, if you belong to upper middle class mm -hmm. and the high income class, right, uh, you'll be able to afford all those basic uh, energy efficient appliances, as well as you can also install uh, solar power plants on your roof because the upfront cost is very high, and mm -hmm. uh, and you can also adopt electric vehicles, right. Yeah. So based on what a consumer class one belongs to, they can do their bit, right, uh, and save on energy emissions and cost. And uh -huh. uh, th th this chart basically gives a brief, uh, you know, overview of how you can understand where you fall and if you can do more, uh, uh, you should, and how to do it. Yeah. Uh, Abhishek, we have got two questions. The chart is really metrics is really interesting. Uh, uh, could you could you like come back to you showing your face maybe so that uh, we can. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Well, one other question is uh, solar panel disposal is a great issue. Any way of disposing them is one issue question. The second is for one kilowatt, what's the area required? So usually it's uh, ten square meters per kilowatt. All right. Okay. Uh, and that, that 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 would do the job for you. So if you have a rooftop which has 10 square meters space, uh, yeah. you should be good installing a one kilowatt system. And it's easy to install. I mean, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is find out somebody in your area, a local uh, solar rooftop developer, and he'll do the job mm -hmm. for you. And okay. all you have to do is just you know call them up, and they'll do the calculations. And you can do all the calculation for yourself. I mean, uh, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy on their website, they have this thing called Solar Rooftop Calculator. I've given the mm -hmm. link of that in, a, in my presentation. And mm -hmm. uh, you can go on it, uh, you can calculate uh, the cost, the savings, the emission savings, everything uh, from that website. Okay, all right. Uh, meanwhile, uh, any, any, any idea on the uh, uh, disposal of solar panels? Yeah, so on the disposal of solar panels, uh, so initially there weren't any kind of uh, uh, guidelines on that. But lately, the government of India, they have come up with uh, specific guidelines. So there are these uh, uh, companies which re recycle solar panels, and they put incentives to these companies. So before disposal, uh, uh, so... Many of the companies now provide uh, solar panels with end-to-end -end, uh, service. So they install it, and at the end of 25 years, they'll take it and recycle it. So right. uh, as, as a consumer who is more conscious about these aspects, you should try and get somebody, some vendor who uh, gives you those uh, services as well. Okay. Abhishek, uh, some people have joined uh, newly to the conversation. Could you go to the second slide once more and explain it in a very fast manner, like, uh, uh, like you know, so that the new people can also get an idea because that's the most important slide I assume. Which one? This the one? The calculating emission slide. Just uh, uh, on, a, on a very fast, uh, like in, in a very short brief, if you could explain you once this more. One? People could, yeah, that one. Yeah, so uh, an easy way to calculate your emissions from home uh, use of electricity is just, just pull up the bill that you get from your uh, uh, board of electricity every month. Uh, just look at how much you are consumed. Usually, uh, one unit of electricity uh -huh. is equal to almost uh, one kg of CO2 emissions. Okay. And... Uh, uh, an average household, as I said, they consume around 300 to 400 units of uh, electricity a, a year, sorry, a month. That uh, translates to around 3,500 units uh, for a year. Oh, yeah. And uh, you convert that into CO2 emissions, you get uh, 3,500 uh, kg CO2 uh, emissions, right? And that's equivalent to almost 23,000 kilometers of car tra travel. That's almost equal to going around the world four times. That's a huge amount of carbon footprint that we have, right? Just from our home energy use, we can do a lot. So the, the slides which you have uh, pinned out here, uh, they have, uh, we went through all of them, and they have uh, things that you can do to reduce your carbon footprint. And yeah, just, just, yeah. just to rate yourself uh, where you stand and what you can do, you know? 
yeah all right yeah. that, that was really informative uh, abhishek uh, we really learned a lot of stuff and uh, just to add uh, in in uh, the average emission of a uh, indian is almost uh, 8 to 10 tons of uh, co2 per uh, year which is the carbon footprint uh, for the audience and uh, american average em- uh, per capita emission is almost 14 tons at the same time uh so to limit global warming from not ex- going be- beyond 2 degrees celsius we need to keep our emissions below 2 uh, 2 tons per year and uh, now from this you understand that our basic energy emission itself is almost 3.2 tons uh, uh of the the around 8 to 10 tons that a person in india emits so that's one uh, uh, thing i wanted to tell people at the same time you also need to understand that uh uh solar uh, solar uh, nowadays state and central government does have sub- subsidies for solar power plants uh in my house we have a 1 kilowatt power plant in which except for uh the 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 uh, water motor pump uh, and iron box everything else works but if we have a new inverter inverter uh, separate uh, uh, put we can uh, run all of them on an average for a family of 3 Uh, we will need at least a uh, decent 2 kilowatt to run all devices including a five star ac if possible if it's a 3 kilowatt you can even have your all uh, uh, your heating requirements even the stove can be run on electricity completely and you could also buy a car uh, limiting your emissions to below almost 3 uh, uh, to 4 tons per year completely the overall emissions the overall carbon footprint uh that's one uh, thing that i want to tell additionally abhishek we have two questions here uh, one is what is the energy consumption of a 1.5 ton ac i think you have mentioned about how much it is for 2 ton ac you can uh, yeah. probably tell uh, no? i think proportionally it could be around uh, some it's an estimate uh, it could be around 500 units uh, a month uh, for a 1.5 ton ac it's, it's, it's 1.5 ton yeah Uh, star, how much star AC if it is? Like if you could tell the difference. So if it's, if it's if it's one star, it could be one point five ton. Sorry, if it's one star, it could consume five hundred units. But again, uh, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency has these numbers. Uh, but uh, most of the people, most of us who buy new ACs now, we don't. Uh, we usually don't go below uh, below three star rating. So okay. that uh, this is so. What you should try is uh, focus on the star rating, right? So try and purchase appliances if you can afford, which are uh, above three star or three star at least, right? You know uh, that can that itself will uh, help you uh, save on energy cost and essentially the emissions as well. Okay. uh here vivina asked us uh, i live in uk and have installed solar panels however i wish to install batteries to so store to so store the power is there any technical specification that i should look for when installing battery yeah i mean for batteries i would say uh they they're a great way to go off grid completely you know what you can do is you can have Uh, a large uh, solar array on your roof uh, you can also have a large battery bank but you have to we talk about technical specification you have to look at if you if if uh, vivina is asking if she wants to go off grid completely where all of her energy comes from the solar power plant on the roof she needs to make sure that the battery sizing uh, is is taken care of so that uh, her energy consumption throughout the day comes from the combination of solar and uh, battery uh, battery packs so there there are these uh, uh, there are these activities which you can do where you can size the battery based on your consumption at the home at at, at your home and uh, the size of the solar power plant that you have so what you do is during the day say usually we get uh, solar energy in the like between uh, 8 in the morning to 5 5 30 in the evening i think uk it could be different it could be the duration would be lesser but even in uk i'm assuming that between 11 to 3 or 4 you'll get most of your energy right so if you have a large enough solar array on your roof you consume most of the energy that is produced during that time between 11 to 4 right and then whatever surplus you generate in the same duration you store it in your battery battery bank and then you use that in the night so that's a good way to uh, uh, completely go off grid 
uh, and not saying that disconnect from the grid completely. I'm saying that if you want to uh, consume uh, all your energy from solar, that's one way to do it. But make sure you do the sizing properly. In terms of technology, uh, if you can afford it, yeah, lithium ion, ion is good. Lead acid batteries are good. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I think her question can be answered this way also. That is, uh, uh, almost one kilowatt of solar power plant will need uh, uh, one uh, two batteries of 150 amp. Uh, yeah, that's what is required. Uh, and uh, Abhishek, we have a question which asks: Is there any radiation from the solar power plants? No, no, there, there, there no radiation. That's uh, these are uh, silicon and the material that uh, we use in solar panels. Uh, they are not radioactive, uh, but okay. you have to take basic care. That's it. You just have to make sure that uh, the normal care you take, right? You just have to, uh, because it's on the roof, a lot of dust, especially in India, right? Uh, we have to make sure that you have to clean the panels every two weeks because if, if there's too much dust on your panel, your output from the solar panel reduces because that that much less sunlight is reaching on the solar panel surface, right? Okay. So there is no, there is no, uh, most of the solar panel technology that we use at home, uh, they have no, uh, how do I put it, uh, in terms of hazard, uh, then there are no high risks. All we have to do is keep, just keep cleaning them and uh, just take basic care. Okay. Uh, so someone asked if this video will be available later. We'll be uploading it on the YouTube page, uh, which is uh, Baba India. You can access it later. As well, the uh, story will be there. It, the video will be there as a story for 24 hours. Abhishek, we have another question, which is what is the operational cost of solar installation? Yeah, so in terms of the operational cost, uh, most of it is the upfront cost, right? As I mentioned in one of the slides I showed you guys, uh, Around you spend around forty-two thousand rupees for installing a one kilowatt system. Once that is done, right, uh, all you have to do is make sure that you clean the surface, right. As long as you do that, there is no other variable cost. There is no cost, unlike in conventional resources where you have to incur fuel cost. There is no fuel cost here. All the energy comes from the sun. So uh, in terms of that. Uh, the, the variable cost or the running cost uh, is for cleaning and uh, sometimes you know if uh, once a year if you have to uh, take care of uh, if some some something breaks down you know uh, you might have to replace it but most of the vendors they give you a good warranty for uh, 25 years so you don't spend any money once you extra money once you install right uh, all you have to do is make sure you clean it every day, every two weeks. Okay. Uh, we have a question which asks, can you shed some light on coolants used in AC and refrigerator? HFC is used apart from using electricity which emits CO2. These HFC is 30 to 40 times more potent greenhouse effect uh, of CO2. Let me just read the question again. Uh, can you shed some light on the coolants used in AC? Apart from using energy, which emits CO2 from a new. Okay, I am. I I don't know much about that. Uh, I I'm. I know more about the consumption of electricity in the AC. <coughs> I'm. I am sorry. I, I don't have expertise in uh, uh, chemistry of the coolant. I'm sure those are. Uh, or, or I do know that uh, people are looking at solutions where where the coolants are also used to uh, improve efficiency. But I, I don't have much information on that. Okay. Uh, we shall uh, 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 Parash okay. Parash Arnu. Uh, we shall get back to you as uh, we'll send you a message on the question for sure. Uh, uh, and we have a question on what is the difference between inverter and battery pack? Uh, okay. The inverter will basically it's, it's, uh, it processes your uh, basically signals right from AC to DC and DC to AC. And uh, that, that, that's a that's, uh, mediator between your solar power plant and your home, right? And uh, even the inverter, which we have traditionally used at home as a backup, that also has a battery pack. Battery pack are solely used for storing energy, which you can use uh, 
uh, when you don't have normal grid or energy from sun, right? Uh, inverters are basically devices which you use to convert uh, energy uh, signals. So that so battery would give you DC, right? So you use an inverter to convert DC to AC, so you can use at home. Uh, so uh, inverter is used for that basically. Okay. Yeah. So do uh, guys, do we have any more question? If so, please do ask. Uh, uh, we shall uh, answer you now itself, or else we shall end the session uh, now. Yeah. How's how's the squirrel doing? Oh, he's good. Uh, he's here. Hey. He's so I, I, I forget the name. He ran away. Uh, okay. Yeah. We have a question. Uh, I have a concern regarding its hundred percent efficiency during uh, monsoon, and there is a question: Is the cost per kilowatt of solar panels vary from state to state? Uh, it doesn't vary from state to state. Now that you know everything has uh, the market is well developed, so I mean, yeah, there is a difference if you go to northeast, like if you want to install a solar power plant in a state. It's Nagaland or uh, say uh, Arunachal or any of these uh, northeastern states. Yeah, I mean the cost of transporting the material would be high, so that would increase the cost. But most of the states uh, they have well developed uh, supply chain system, so you won't find too much of a difference there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah, and, I, mean, uh, I have a question from Sonu. Sonu saying that. Uh, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. On during monsoons, I agree. Uh, it it is not going to give you hundred percent. So that that's why what you do is at least right now, uh, as uh, things are developing in the future, right? What we do is you install a solar power plant which takes care of part of your need, right? While staying connected to the grid. So whenever during monsoons, whenever you don't have like electricity uh, uh, from the sun. You can use the grid electricity, right? Still, okay. uh, your your, uh, your basic needs are met. So the savings on cost, the savings on emissions I showed that accounts for uh, the uh, re reduction in generation in monsoon that we see every year. So that accounts for okay. that. All right. Okay, that was really informative, Abhishek. Uh, we learned a lot from you, uh, guys. Please look into the PDF if required, and you can share it with your friends. It gives a very, uh, he has done it in such a way that it's very simple to understand for anyone and everyone to understand what your energy emissions are and how can you reduce it. So let's, uh, being a Genry tribe, let's all teach each other and also learn from each other uh, and pass on the knowledge and at the same time practice the same too, uh, reduce as much as possible. Abhishek, do you want to tell something uh, towards the crowd? Yeah, yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we can all do our bit. Uh, the solutions which we have shown out here, they are not. Uh, I mean, they are not going to solve all our climate change problems, right? But uh, we need to do our bit. Questions in the end for a seventy homes house society, if we had to install solar panels, what would be the approximate cost? Seventy. So again, that, that would depend yeah. on uh, the. Well, the, uh, we will do one thing. We, we can answer these questions separately. Uh, we can email it to them. This is write to us at like you know write to us at Baba India, and we'll respond to those extra questions that you have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll but, be for uh, sure. Uh, considering that a house will need around two kilowatts, uh, you need one ki one forty kilowatt of power plant, which would cost around one forty into forty two thousand, including subsidy. Without subsidy, around the sixty thousand. So one forty yeah. into sixty thousand rupees would be the cost for uh, the housing society. Also, Without can subsidy. please explain? The monetary saving of solar that was mentioned in the presentation. Uh, you could go through the presentation. Uh, yes. So yeah, with that, uh, we can stop. All right. It's great. Already yeah. Uh, we shall I answer see. as many questions as possible over messages if possible. Uh, you can always contact us over over Baba India and Abhishek also has been tagged on our page. You can contact him directly to if required to inquire anything uh, about energy uh, and thanks a lot to the huge amazing crowd who have supported us. Uh, we won't be having a session tomorrow but to, uh, day after we are certainly having a session. Hope uh, I'll see you all there. Thanks a lot and thank you once again Abhishek. It was really amazing session. 
uh, uh, hats off. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, guys, and stay safe. Bye bye.